Okay, we are live, episode 149, Yanni Hafnagel, Lemon Perfect, McKenna Krishnavi, Jenner Match, I got into it, let me do my thing, okay, just do my thing, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Mark. Uh, Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, Yanni, uh, Lemon Perfect. I'm going to shout out somebody right now just to get the flow going. Um, I've got a buddy. He wants to be a lot more friends than I want to be with him. It's Sometimes it's reciprocal. His name's Adam Brown. And he drinks one of these. Like, he's always, like, got one next to him. I make fun of him a little bit. Then he's tell he wants to know why can't I be an influencer for them. Anyway, I just wanted to shout that out real quick to get the set the precedent here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the brand. When did it start? What's it all about? We sold our first bottle at the end of 2018. We launched in a keep refrigerated environment, pivoted to a shelf stable product um, end of 2019. And the brand has really caught fire since. Um, in one sentence, Lemon Perfect is a flavored lemon water, uh, super refreshing, um, uh, very delicious and contain zero sugar. Why did it start? What was what was behind it? I coached college basketball for 10 years. My last year, a friend of mine wrote a book on the keto diet. In the back of his book were all these sample meal plans. And every day started by drinking organic lemon water. The short story is I hated it, right? But it stuck as a non-negotiable part of my morning routine. And, and uh, I'm in the locker room one day. All of our players are drinking vitamin water, Gatorade at the time. Bye. And I said, my God, can we take organic lemon water and give it the flavor profile of what I would now call Main Street USA? And, and uh, you know, that seed of our journey, great flavor that's also good for you, has been the bedrock of our brand from minute one. That's interesting. So the the idea, which I could talk on separately about health wellness. So um, specifically morning time, are you saying that? Somebody was talking about having water with some lemon in it to start the day. Is that kind of how it started? It's, it's sort of a wellness regimen? Just just your morning elixir, if you will, right? Yeah. I mean, so many times, you know, we, we start our day, we go reach for a, a cup of coffee. You know, a actually, you want some time from when you wake up until you go grab your first cup. And, and hydration is key, right? I mean, hydration is the foundational a uh, 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 building block of of wellness, candidly speaking, right? And so for us, you know, lemons are a powerful superfruit. They aid in hydration. Uh, and so squeezing lemons into a glass, eight ounces of water in the morning, awesome, awesome, right? And uh, but it's it's bland, it's boring, it's void of taste, it's painful process. And we just said, hey, can we make that? You know, can we make that? Um, you know, can we can we basically make that into something? Uh, that's an elevated drink experience and very drinkable. And now here we are. Everybody should look that up. I, I start my morning. Uh, people know I'm into health. Uh, I start my morning with electrolytes, right? Um, I, uh, I'm i also a, a, a morning exercise person. So I have to I couple it with a, a workout, pre-workout, which I'm not a fan of, actually. So when we talk about you said coffee, but mine's got some caffeine in it. Not a fan of that, people. So I'm telling you that just if you can start off with some water electrolytes, uh, get flowing in or lemon, look up, look this up. Again, we're going to go in many different ways here. Now let's get back to the show. Um, your first bottle, uh, 2018, where did you go? Did you, you had no experience. You were doing college hoops. Um, you, I'm assuming, make some phone calls and find maybe a, a kitchen, maybe a commercial kitchen, or did you go right into co-packing? Huh. Mark, my, my journey, or I should say our journey, was filled with immeasurable darkness early on, right? Um, you know, the season ended and, um, you know, I, I was having lunch with a friend in Santa Monica and uh, we were talking about this idea and, and, and John said, I love it. Anything that you can do that can capture a piece of someone's daily routine, what they do in the morning when they first get up, what they do at night when they go to sleep or any point in between is worth going for, right? And that's when I jumped up and I said, my God, I've got it. The morning drink, the morning elixir, right? And I Googled how to start a beverage brand from his couch that night. Um, and from, from that Google search until uh, our first production run, which was in a commercial kitchen, that was well over a year, a lot of false starts, right? But what we did is I was fortunate on the second time around. So our first exploration with the Flavor Lab was a disaster. The second one we got right, um, we, we we actually only had one revision to the very original formula. Um, but uh, from there, 
we ended up, you know, going to a commercial kitchen. Remember, we were in a keep refrigerated environment. So, um, you know, uh, uh, it was filled 15 minutes down the road from an HPP facility, high pressure processing. That's how we, you know, launched. Now, fortunately, our MOQs early on weren't that big. I think we ran, I think we ran maybe 3,000 six pack cases, our first run, right? So not, and, um, you know, today we're, we're, we're doing that in about three or four minutes, I think. So, so, um, anyway, uh, yes, we, we launched the commercial kitchen in Southern California. Um, it was a six head filler, you know, the whole thing. And, and, uh, but what it allowed us to do was make, you know, we had just raised a million dollar pre-seed financing. So it allowed us to make a million dollars worth of mistakes. But what we got right, Mark, is we launched the brand in Southern California in the natural channel, right? So Bristol Farms was our first account. At the time, it was 12 stores. Lazy Acres, five more, Erewhon, right? 22 stores at the time. And we said, we're going to be a mile deep and an inch wide. And we're going to do everything that we can to build a velocity story in those stores. And we were obsessive about it. And you know what? Within a couple of weeks, we had blown out shelves, but we were demoing in the stores every day. And then that data story allowed us to then, we went to Whole Foods and we said, okay. And then, so then we get Whole Foods, Southern Pacific region. We get the Northeast region. We get the Rocky, and then, and then it started to go from there. And, and, uh, and so we were, we were very thoughtful about, about being in one place and trying to build a velocity story in just a few stores. Give, give us the, the three items that you did. You mentioned demos. Um, so was that your first focus as far as getting it, as far as trial, getting in, in the hands and in the mouth of consumers in the SoCal area? You were standing there. Your team was standing there day after day and then noticing that these people were buying, right? Because you need them to buy once. I'm assuming that is it three? What is it? Three bucks? At the time, at the time, we launched 249 in the produce okay. set. Okay. So 249 produce set, again, because it was cold at first. Um, by the way, what was requiring it to stay cold? So the 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 pro the the kill step, right? So HPP is, you know, 90. Well, we started with 90 days. We ended up getting to 120 days shelf life, but high pressure processed items have to be kept refrigerated throughout right now we process aseptically that's our so we use aseptic processing that allows us to now have 12 month shelf life dry so the whole business has changed but um again i didn't know better remember mark when i when we first launched this was at the height of suja at the height of watermelon water at the height of rebel at the height of the kombucha craze i didn't know any better and so it took us launching the brand for me to sit there and say, oh, my God, I I don't want to live only in the cooler. Right. I, I want to build big activity underneath the roof of the retailer. I want to dream in the biggest way possible. I don't want to build a ten million dollar in sales business. I want to build a hundred million dollar in sales business and in beverage in high velocity beverage you, beverage. You've got no choice but to build it dry because you're never going to be able to get the display activity if you have to live in coolers, right? There's just not enough inventory. And so now if you walk into any of our accounts, Publix here in the Southeast, Fred Meyer in the Pacific Northwest, Ralph's in Southern California, we have something called the seven second rule. Within seven seconds of walking into a retailer, I want you to see our product on display. And so, and, and, and you, we, 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 people are tripping over lemon perfect now. Right. So, but that's how you drive trial. We create a fashion show in the stores, right? Our packaging does that for us. But Mark, to your point, we were 249. We always said we're going to promote aggressively, right? Like that's been core to who we are. We, we, we have consciously compressed our margin story today from day one to build a big time margin story late. Right now, we have great capital partners and 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 we've been able to tell great story from day one. So we don't care about free cash flow today. We care about share. We care about unit share, dollar share. We do not care about free. Well, we care about free cash flow of the future. We're very we, we we are best in class with every dollar of spend. Right. But there's no other way for us to dream about building a billion dollar business than the way that we're doing. So, so that's been for it's, and I'm different, right? Like we're built different. It's just a different psychology here and it is what it is. 
I could, <laughs> I could unpack a lot of that um, and go many different ways with that. Uh, but I, for the, for the audience, I want to share a few things just for context here. Um, number one is he's being very transparent, uh, which is really helpful. Uh, there's not a lot of that in the space. Um, and so that's important. Uh, number two, uh, you got a really great attitude, of course, and it's what's helped you build this to what, what it is. Um, and so that's helpful. Um, you can see the passion and, uh, just throw it. So anybody understands what this may look like, this is probably what he says in front of capital partners, by the way. Um, he's saying and acting the same way, and he's staying very consistent, though, with how the brand will get built um, and how they are focused on specific things. So that's number two takeaway. Um, number three is in a world today where capital is becoming tighter um, and the space overall is becoming um, different than in years past, um, it's almost refreshing to hear you stay um, consistent with what your message probably was 24 months ago, um, because everybody's what I would consider a storyline has changed uh, uh, as of late. Um, they're now talking cash flow. Uh, they're now they're now removing the idea of burns in their storyline. Again, just being fair, and I because I, I'm aware, well aware of what the uh, what is happening out there. Um, so it, I, I go back to the word, it's refreshing to hear you articulate the way you have. Um, I've heard, I, I knew you before through a few things and I know that you have that passion there. And so I'm really, um, uh, 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 I was going to use the word attracted to it, but I didn't know if that was going to be weird or not. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, uh, um, I, I, I think that's awesome. Um, I, now, uh, and then we're going to go back. We're going to run over a little bit of time on this because I think that's okay, though. Um, um, there, There's a lot to say about what you are saying. And, and so, uh, again, so people, because especially those who are new to the business or want to get in the business or even in that early stage, you do have to extract what is going to be appropriate for you and what isn't. And I just call that kind of like the come to Jesus moments. I'm Jewish, by the way, so I say that uh, with a lot of love. Um, and come to Jesus moments and, and and really be reflective and understanding of who you are and what you have the abilities to do or capabilities to do. Um, his story may not be yours, and that's okay. Um, now, back to you, Yanni. I want to um, sort of break down a couple more things. Where where are you guys now as far as you mentioned some retail distribution uh, because it's shelf stable which i did like this idea can you do some a lot of direct to consumer if you do have those customers there um because i could call it out and say i think that's great that you're heavy on promotion and you want people stumbling over you at store level which is very expensive very expensive to be stumbled over uh as the way you're describing it you have to have some pull through website uh, or Amazon um, from those customers who have had trial. Does that is let's talk about it. Is that happening? Well, what do you guys see as a business? Listen, our business has big flywheel, right? Amazon is very, very important to our business. But, you know, we actually value our retail business uh, in a in a in a bigger way only because, you know, the strategics that we're talking to, Big Soda, right? Coke, Pepsi, KDP, th th they they want to take their truck and they want to deliver our product to retail environments, right? Our Amazon business, our dot-com business, it's not as valuable to them, right? So we want to win in the trenches. We want to win the street fight in the stores every day, right? And Mark, I, I, wanna, I do want to add, we are very sophisticated with our promotional strategy. Very sophisticated. Uh, I, I would tell you, as far as emerging beverage goes, we're right there at the top of the, I mean, we, we are very, very thoughtful about what we do, right? We think about units, we think about dollars, and we think about revenue growth, right? Um, we, we, we don't want to, you don't want to over promote, you won't, don't want to, you don't want to disc, but you want to bring people into the brand, right? And there's no better way to do that than with yellow tax. No better way. Right. Like no one's thought of a better way to do that. Driving trial through promotion. What are because of the liquid inside of the bottle, because of our taste profile, right, because of our packaging, because of the functional benefits of Lemon Perfect. 
we see that the customer that tries Lemon Perfect on promo comes back at a white tag. I mean, in a big way, right? And 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 so that's been, I mean, that and that's the measurement of a healthy business, right? As you take down trade spend, right? Does the business continue to accelerate? Um, so, but to answer your question about e-commerce versus retail, uh, we, we over time, we want to be about 85% retail and 15% e-commerce. But what you see now is, is if you buy us or find us on Amazon, and we're very, very efficient on Amazon, that same customer is now seeing us in retail and buying us in retail. People that are finding us in retail are now going to Amazon and buying us on Amazon, right? So, so there's a flywheel that's very, very important. Um, and and not to go back, but but Mark, I do want to just on the financing or, or or the way that we run our business. You make a great point. It's not for everyone, but for me, I've never wavered on how we have to do this, right? I, I've always said it's going to take us hundred million dollars to build a billion dollar business. And we'll be one of a few that are that that are playing that or not everyone. There are some great businesses out there that can transact for 30 million, 50 million, 100 million dollars. Right. We're just going after an addressable market that's massive. And and the, the chances of winning in beverage are so small, so small. When I say winning, winning big, so small. Right. You have a few transactions every decade, every decade. I just made a decision. I said, we're going to just go after it in the biggest way possible. And there are two ways out of this office for me. One's in a box, two's with some coins in my pocket. And so like that's, we're going to be very intentional about the way that we build it. Just figure out how we win at all costs. We could go on for that. I'm going to bring you back on. Uh, I get, I get your info up there, Yanni, at the end of this thing. We, we got to, we got to move over here. McKenna. She's got a Corvette shirt on. I think I can't even see. I don't have my glasses on. She's doing her, doing her thing. Uh, tell us about his Jenner match. Tell us. Yes, yes. So Jenner Match, I'll keep it short and sweet since we've already heard so many great things. But basically, um, it's the tool that we just recently launched that we've been operating on manually. Um, but now we are in um, the App Store. So we're launched and ready to rock as of last week. So that's very exciting. But basically, what we do is we connect um, brands to creators. Um, it's going to be very different than what you would think of with traditional influencer marketing, per se, because these creators are generating content that lives in the brand's account. Um, so they're going to be people that are fluent in TikTok that understand what's going to drive sales and convert for you. Um, um, and they're going to make content to live on the brand's page versus an influencer ca campaign, for example, where the content is generated and then promoted to the influencer's audience. So in a nutshell, um, that's what Jenner Match is. We really created it because we just saw um, uh, so many brands know the value and the importance of TikTok and they know they need to be on the app, but don't have the capacity, right? It is a monster of a platform. It has more users going there every day than Google at this point. So it's, it, if you're not on TikTok, you're missing out is what we like to say. So, but we also totally recognize not everyone has the capacity to do that internally with their team, especially with all the other social media that we're trying to do at the same time. So we're basically here to make that one step easier for you um, and provide that resource and the talented creators to make the content for you. So in a nutshell, that's what Jenner Match is. Well said. Uh, McKenna's info is there for Jenner Match. Yanni's info for Lemon Perfect is there. Thank you, too. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you.